Welcome to episode four of Ask Randy, where you ask, I answer. You can submit your questions to Ask Randy at my website by clicking that link. I will also leave a link below so that you don't have to click away from this fabulous video. You're not going to find any stupid intros with fancy graphics and stupid music here. I'm just going to get right to it. I'm not going to waste your time or insult your intelligence by begging you to subscribe or trying to teach you what the bell does. Like so many other desperate YouTube channels do. I would never do that. I'm here to simply give you the information that you crave. Today's first question comes from B Googly. B Googly. I own the Baofeng BFH7. I'm studying for my technician license, but in the meantime, I'm unlicensed, but I only use my Baofeng BFH7 for scanning frequencies and listening to the FM radio. Is this practice illegal with a radio that does not have an FCC ID sticker in the back of the radio? Does that make my radio illegal to use? That is a good question. If there's simply no sticker on the back, it could just be that somebody peeled it off, but it more likely means that is the radio is not FCC approved for use on whatever frequencies it can transmit on. So in that case, it is probably not legal, probably does not meet the FCC requirements. You would be violating the FCC regulations, not laws, regulations. But what I don't know is, does it, must there be a sticker, like the sticker on your, like the tag on your mattress, must it be there in order for you to use it? That I'm not sure of. So I'm gonna leave this question up to the real experts in the comments section. So if you know the answer to this question, leave a comment below. Xenu, help us all. The next question comes from several people asking several different ways, but basically the question is, Randy, what is your favorite ham radio or GMRS radio YouTube channel to watch? I don't really have a favorite GMRS channel. I, there's not that many people dumb enough to have GMRS only channels out there. What kind of an idiot would do that? But when I need to learn something, there are a couple of channels that I watch and refer to often. They do mostly ham radio stuff, but they also do some GMRS stuff. My first favorite would be Josh, ham radio crash course. He does mostly ham stuff, some GMRS stuff. And the second would be Jason, uh, ham radio 2.0. Both of these are about the only two ham radio related channels that I can watch for more than 30 seconds without dying of boredom. They're both informative. They both are able to convey information without boring us to death. Uh, Josh, Ham Radio Crash Course, lives right down the road from me. I've actually contacted him a few times. I've left comments on some of his videos saying, hey, I've offered to take him off-roading. We'll do some ham radio versus GMRS radio type comparisons up in the mountains adventuring. He does not seem interested. I think he's afraid that I might be mean to him. If you want to see the Not a Rubicon get together with Ham Radio Crash Course, if you're familiar with his channel, leave a comment on one of his videos or send him an email and say, hey, you want to see the two of us get together. It might be fun. The next question also comes from several people basically asking, what is a FARS? In several of my videos, when I do uh, radio or antenna reviews or comparisons, I often mention how many FARS does it talks? Some people don't understand what a FARS is. It's a complicated technical term. Now, one viewer, a supporting viewer, Scott Hayes, he's a paid channel supporter. He supports the channel by clicking the join button below. Scott Hayes has answered this question already in several comments when other people ask, what is a FARS? So let me read his definition, which clearly defines what a FARS is. FARS, F-A-R-S, noun undescribed distance of measure that has little or no real bearing due to the variables innately ingrained in the suffering of the testing. I think that defines what a FARS is perfectly. The next question comes from Chuck H. My wife is a Girl Scout troop leader. I'm looking into getting the troop a GMRS license. We want to teach the girls about ham, GMRS, MERS, and CB radio, that we would most likely use GMRS on hikes and campouts. How can we accomplish this, and can we accomplish this for free? Well, Chuck, thank you for your question. Per the new, newer, newish FCC guidelines, GMRS licenses are granted only to individuals. They don't offer a GMRS business license anymore or group license anymore. So anyone transmitting on a GMRS radio would have to have their own individual license. You can get a FCC license for nonprofit 501c use, but that is not good on GMRS. That's a business type license and you need a certain business type, LMR type, a non-GMRS radio to use that license. So pretty much for GMRS, 
Nothing is free. You're not going to get a free license. There's no group license that you can get that I'm aware of. Of course, if I'm wrong, trust me, someone will leave a comment below. But it seems like FRS or MERS might be a better choice because they're both license free and free to use our free airwaves. Jim wants to know, what does GMRS stand for? Jim, this requires a two part answer. Part one is General Mobile Radio Service. Part two is Google. Jim Kunkel, Kunkel asks, are your index fingers disproportionately smaller than your other fingers or is that an illusion of the camera? I never really thought about it, Jim. I don't know. What do you think? Take a close look. The next question comes from several people and they all ask in one way or another, what do you know about the new high power Midland radios that are coming up? Do you know anything about them? Yes, I do know quite a lot about the new unreleased Midland radios. I know how well they work. I know how far they can transmit. I know all their specs. I know how they feel in my hands and how they fit in my Jeep. And I know that I'm not allowed to talk about them yet. So keep watching. The next question is from Christian. Christian asks, I would love to have on board of my sailing vessel a transceiver to be able to reach far, all bands, possibly receive weather facts on my laptop during offline from internet, and in case of need, to call some help. Christian, that's more of a statement than a question. Travis Gibson asks, does the use of privacy codes reduce the performance of radio communications to broadcast and receive in a wooded area? First of all, Travis, do not fall for the big GMRS radio conspiracy lies Privacy codes are not private in any way. Watch that video if you wanna learn more about exactly why privacy codes are not private. But if you understand all the risks of using privacy codes and you want to use them anyway, I do not believe that they would affect your transmission in any way. The codes are a silent little tone that are inserted in or above or below. I don't know all the technical specifications because I don't care, but they are, transmitted along with your voice. So there is a slight chance that they're taking up a tiny, tiny infinitesimal piece of the bandwidth. So I'm sure that some people, some people might say, yes, it affects the transmission performance by 0.00002510%. But in the real world, with somebody using human ears and talking to another human being, I don't think it's gonna affect anything. Ken Rowlandson asks, what license do I need to use the Redivis RT29 for normal non-emergency use? I apologize if I missed it in existing comments, but did not see. On my review video of the Redivis RT29, I explained this clearly more than once, but this is you ask, I answer. So you ask, I will answer. The RT29 requires a ham license and you are only able to transmit on ham bands on that radio with your ham license, meaning that you would not be able to transmit on GMRS or FRS frequencies, even if you have a GMRS license without violating the FCC regulations. Regulations, not laws. I'm gonna make a video. Right after I make my wideband versus narrowband video, going to make a video about the difference between FCC regulations and laws and what actually happens if you break those regulations. So to use your RT29, you will need a ham license and you will need to transmit only on the ham bands. You could also use a business license and transmit on your pre-assigned frequencies, but most people would use a ham radio license. Dustin C asks, I've been waiting for the Wuxin, Ocean, Wuxin, KG935G to be in stock again. Do you have any idea when that may be? I have to buy a new radio for work ASAP and really do not want to settle on a different radio. Dustin, I've said this a hundred times in other videos and in comments replying to people's question that have asked this same question a hundred times, but this is you ask, I answer. So I guess now it will be 101 times. If you want to get a KG935 or any radio at, from uh, Wuxin that is currently not in stock, they're all very, uh, many of the GMRS radios are very popular and hard to get a hold of. And they're not in stock because as soon as some clown makes a video review of them, they sell out immediately. The trick is do not wait until it says in stock to buy it. If you do that, you will never get one. You will be the last guy to get one. Go to the buy2wayradios.com website or bettersaferadio.com website, depending on what radio you're getting. Pre-order it. You may still have to wait, but that ensures that when the next boatload of radios comes in, you get yours. Because if you're waiting, everybody else gets theirs and they're going to sell out again. And if you wait until it says in stock, you're never going to get one. Daniel Mahoney asks, 
My topography eliminates cell phone use. I'm disabled and having a second way to contact assistant seems to be prudent. I'd like to find out if investing in this technology would provide me with usable means to call for assistance. I have a feeling, since my isolated location may be a dead zone, would investing in this technology be beneficial and or financially realistic? Daniel, listen to me. GMRS is in the UHF band. It is high frequency in the 462 to 467 megahertz range. UHF is a line of sight band. That means that the radio electricities and waves do not go around anything. They don't go through very much. They'll go through some walls. Can't go through mountains, can't go through thick forest. It is line of sight. So that means that to talk to something, you must be able to see that something. Now it doesn't mean that it has to be close enough that you can see it. I can talk to a repeater, for example, that's 69 miles away. I can't see 69 miles. I can't see the repeater, but if I have binoculars, because there's nothing between me and it, I can transmit to it. So if you can see it, if there's nothing between you and it, and that it being a repeater or another person, you can talk to it. If there's a mountain between you, or if you know it, again, even though you may not see it because it's too far away, if there's a mountain there, you're not gonna talk through it or around it. If you can see it, you can talk to it. Ron Jarvis, Ron Jarvis asks, repeater output power at the antenna. GMRS output is 50 watts EIRP. Your antenna is 6.5 dB gain, coax at 100 feet at 3 dB loss. Duplexer loss 2.0 gives EIRP at 63 watts or higher if the manufacturer antenna gain is truly dB and not dBi. Can you speak about this on one of your videos? Yep, I just did. Hillbilly Jeeper WV, call sign etiquette. And now he has typed out an example of talking on the radio, which goes, Steve, WRME, blah, 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 come in Cindy. So that's Steve calling Cindy, Roger Beep. He's got his Roger Beep on. Cindy responding, WRME, blah, blah, blah. Go ahead, Steve. Roger beep. So what he's saying is once he establishes communication with his wife, properly using his call sign and properly using his Roger beep, then can we communicate for up to 15 minutes before each of us needs to repeat the call sign? Is this the correct radio etiquette? Mr. WV, there is no real etiquette on GMRS. It's made for people to talk to other people in real human English or whatever language you choose. But the rules do say, not laws, rules do say, when you transmit, you must ID yourself. And if you are in a long conversation, such as with Cindy, you must also ID, stop and ID at least once every 15 minutes and then at the end of your transmissions. So identify it first, blah, 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 for 15 minutes, identify again, blah, 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 15 more minutes, identify again, or blah, blah, and then stop your conversation and identify again. That's what the rules or regulations, not laws, that's what the rules say. So I think you've got it right. The next question comes from Brad Saunders. Sanders Saunders. Hi, I've stumbled upon your YouTube channel content and I love it. Of course you do, Brad. I'm a new aspiring radio amateur, red flag number one, and I have a few questions. Actually, a lot of questions, but I will keep them to a minimum for now. I should mention that I am an electrician and totally understand electric... You haven't watched very many of my videos, have you, Brad? Rob D asks, question regarding UV5R. I ordered two of these and programmed them with Chirp. I can get sad ham bands to transmit between the two, but cannot transmit GMRS channels between the two units. Any ideas? Yes, I have a few ideas. The UV5R is a ham radio. Now, back in the old days, prior to around May or, or June of uh, 2021, Baofeng, Bufuang, didn't exactly follow the FCC guidelines and regulations, regulations, not laws, with regard to the manufacturer and restrictions of the radios. So in the olden days, on the pre-2021 UV5R radios, you could transmit on any frequency you wanted. Ham bands, MERS bands, GMRS, FRS, weather channel, you could transmit on anything. And the FCC did not like that. So a couple of years ago, the FCC sent Baofeng a very strongly worded letter reminding them of the regulations and requirements to sell radios in the United States. And soon after, two or three years after, Baofeng began manufacturing their radios to comply with those FCC regulations. Regulations, not laws. So all of the newer Baofeng UV5Rs adhere to those rules. They will not allow you, the radio will not allow you to break the rules, so you cannot transmit on GMRS. It is a ham radio. You can only transmit on ham bands if you're using a newer 
UV5R. Jimmy wants to know, I want to buy the UV5R to listen to. How do I get frequencies to listen to in my local area like you? MyGMRS.com, RadioReference.com. Those two websites will give you every frequency there is to listen to for your area. Herbert Powell and about a hundred other people have submitted the same question either through the Ask Randy uh, web forum or in comments or email. A lot. This is the most commonly asked question ever in the history of ever. When are they lowering the GMRS license fee? Our government lowered the GMRS fees. For those that you do that do not know, the GMRS license fee has always been seventy dollars. The FCC, Congress, everybody, they got together and they have lowered the price to $35. It was approved by Congress or whoever does the approving last year, a year ago, and it was implemented or adopted or whatever the words are that the gubernaments use to, they, it's all been approved. That The last step was approved by the FCC in April. It's done. The new legal license fee for GMRS license is $35. It's a done deal. But if you go to the FCC website and buy your GMRS license today, it still costs you $70. So the question is, when does the actual price drop take effect? It's legal, it's done, it's approved. When will it happen? Nobody knows, but I have an inside source that no other YouTuber has. So let's see what it says. When will the FCC actually lower the price of the GMRS license? And here is the answer. The course of history shows that as government grows, liberty decreases. This next question comes from L. Vigigante? Vegement? Vigigante. 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 El Vigigante. What do you do with all those radios that companies send you to review? Do you have to send them back or can you sell them to people who might like an open box, deboxed special? As you can see, most of the radios go to the Jenga wall of radios back there. But what you don't see is that many of those boxes are empty because most of the radios that I get, one or two I may keep like my favorites, but the vast majority of them. So when the manufacturers send them to me, they are mine to keep. That's how it is with all of us big social media influencers. The manufacturers send it to us basically as payment to review it for an honest review. Although we all know that some YouTubers don't actually do honest reviews because they don't want to hurt that relationship to get that free stuff. They know that when I review it, if it's a piece of junk, I'm going to say it's a piece of junk. So when they send them, they're mine to keep. Most of the radios I end up giving away to people in the local little GMRS group that we have and the others I just donate. I ship them off to a place in New Jersey. They help homeless people and they have people out in the field and they use GMRS radios to communicate. So I have sent several uh, handhelds and mobile radios to them. So the answer is, I keep some, I give some away. Well, kids, that's all the time we have today. If you have any questions about the questions that were asked or my answers, leave a...